helpful. We're going to take some audio that was posted in the ACX group. And this is actually not a voiceover directly. This is singing. Principles are identical, though. Every once in a while, you'll get, and this, uh, anybody who's doing a podcast, anybody who's getting audio in from somebody else, this is going to be, val I hope this will be valuable for you. But this is going to be an issue that comes up where somebody recorded too hot, and because they recorded too hot, then we need to deal with it. Now, I sh should preface all this with, this shouldn't really happen to begin with, but it, ha it happens all the time. So if somebody's recording on one of the more advanced DAWs, then what they can do or they should do is make sure that they have a safety limiter on the input. So this, this is set up right here where even if I clap, then you'll see that would have, that's, that was the, I would have gone five over there, but my limiter kicked in in a fraction of a second right here and made sure that I didn't clip. So my audio would never clip and this can do it as well or better than anything else. Nobody will know it was ever there if we did that. So you should have a safety limiter on there. And hey, Bob, thanks for throwing a little message in there. Really, really helpful. So, what, but what we're going to do today is I tend to live on this uh, orangey view, also known as a spectrogram. But when I'm dealing with audio that comes in from somebody else, I'll always flip it over and take a look at it, and I'll show the waveform view. If it's my own audio, I know that it's already within specs. It's already within a certain range. I've already measured it. So there's really a whole different mindset when I start off on something that I've gotten from somebody else. Now, first thing to do is glance up here at the top, and you can instantly see that some audio has distorted here. It's gone over. It's really, really hot, hotter than it should be. So you can see that right there. Uh, a couple little tips. A lot of times when I get these things that are two track like this, they actually were recorded with a single mic. Not always, but some, but dependent and depending on the situation, those two tracks are virtually identical or they are identical. It just depends on their setup. So a lot of times what I do is in this case, I did flip over to Studio One and with the browse here, I can find that file over here. There's a little browse thing. And what you can do is right click on it and you can say split to mono files. And so this is one of the things I, I do all the time. If I'm given some data, uh, some audio that is stare, you know, two track because it is easier to see issues when you switch it over. Here's the same exact track, but now because it's mono, and now I can have it full screen. And because those two tracks are virtually identical, I can work on one of them and end up with a much better sound because I can see things. I can find things easier. So a lot of, so there's a couple things I do. Number one, if someone's recording right, then they don't have this, but that's not the reality. People can be recording in a bunch of situations. Podcasts all the time have guests who aren't doing the right thing. So and then people are recording in different places. They don't always have control. And if they're out and about, somebody's singing in this case. So I'm going to play you this. I'll show you what I mean. First thing is we go back here and I've marked a couple places. Uh, I'm going to switch it over to the other view. And you'll see this is clipping. And I'll zoom in a little bit on that. And what we have right here is clipping. But that one's, that one's okay. And this one has some distortion. I'll play that for a second. I have another spot here. I right didn't hear this definitely clips and distorts right in here. I'll play it for you. Um, this is singing. This is not, but it's the same principle. <laughs> okay, can you hear that? Oops, let me go stereo here. So. Clipping, distortion, we've got that in a few places here. Same thing, and the same thing will apply to voiceover. You're going to get some voiceover in that's distorted because somebody had their gain up too high. And when they do that, you'll get something like that uh, right here in this one. Similar similar idea. Lift your voice, lift your heart. I don't know if you can hear that in there. It's harder over there. Lift your heart. So you may need headphones to hear that. I don't know. So put throw a comment in there. If you can, if if you can hear that distortion, I, I can't tell what you can hear over the wires. I can. <laughs> the high end on that's totally distorted, so it's easy to hear here. It would be easier for you to hear on your on your own. And the first thing I would do, uh, I would probably flip this over to a to a mono file in this case and do the same thing all in mono. And I'll show you why, because the difference is now when we switch over to the other view that we're going to use then it's just easier to see things. So if you're newer to this, definitely switch things to mono when you can. 
you only because if the two channels are the same, the only issue is when you're in stereo, eh, you can't see as much detail. So can you fix it? Of course you can. You can do it really well in stereo, or the easier thing is to flip it over to mono. All right. So, but I'm, I'm going to do it in the stereo track just because some of you will get stereo tracks that you need to keep stereo. So I'm going to do it there, but I just want to warn you, anytime you can switch to mono and then output it in mono, it, it, especially if they gave it to you as a two track, these are really the same track repeated twice. It comes up all the time, but either way, you'll see the issues here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this whole thing and I'm going to, first thing we're going to declip it. Then we'll use some de-click and then we'll denoise it. Okay. And, I, and then I'll look at, look for questions over there. So declip. I'll show you what should happen here. Now I have a couple of defaults that I love that I go to. Clipping is something that uh, isn't brain surgery. They, these guys, isotopes just totally nailed this stuff. Two, two settings that I, the, here's the two go-to presets that I use. Now, to be honest with you, most of the time I tune it and hand tune it and I go through and I'll use the suggest and figure things out and I might tune it from the suggestions it gives. I'm not teaching today how to use the clip at any deep level. I do have a class coming out on that, on a podcast, because people who are doing podcasts get all sorts of interesting things coming in. But in this case, I'm going to show my two favorite built-in presets that everybody can use right out of the gate without thinking twice about it, all right? Yeah. Oh, Adrian, good. The clipping is painfully obvious. Yes. <laughs> it is on this end, but I can't always tell what you can hear on that end. So the first thing I'm going to do, here are my two clipping uh, favorites. Uh, one, high quality clipping at minus one. This is a great preset. Whoever wrote this, give them a kiss. Well, no, I won't do that. But I, but I will say that one's really, really good. I use that a lot. And then uh, the mild analog cl clipping is another one that I will use a lot. Okay, I like those two, but the, the um, high quality clipping at minus one is, is a great thing. So you have this one high quality, minus one, post limiter, yes. Uh, by the way, when you fix some of this stuff, if you don't do that, some things can also go up over zero. It'll still handle it, but you should, what's amazing is watch. The, I, my, my fingers never leave the hand type thing, okay? This is magic. So I'll let it render that out, and you won't see a big change there necessarily. But listen to this. Same thing. Lift your voice, lift your heart. That one I heard, that one I heard the distortion, okay? Hold on. So now let me show you the other preset. I'm going to undo that. So as you can see, sometimes you'll do it and you go, ah, that wasn't enough, okay? It just wasn't enough. So now I'm going to go over here to declip this way and I'm going to switch it over and I'm going to try mild analog clipping. And then every once in a while, I'll try extreme analog clipping. But I just want you to know there's about there's a couple of them that I use a lot and I get about 90 percent of what I want. But if I do the mild analog clipping, the first thing I do is flip it over to high. It does take it a little longer to do this, but I prefer that definitely in that mode. And then we'll check it. So after you do this, you need to then listen to it. And also, I should show you this, hold on. Flip it over to this view and see if you are getting what something that you see. Here's a weird thing though about clipping. Sometimes visually, RX isn't going, when I'm zoomed way out, it's not gonna be obvious that it brought it all down. And so if you look at it really close, because there are visual rounding errors, we will call it, okay? That's my term for that, visual rounding errors where, if I'm zoomed out too much, it does look like everything was clipping, but the reality is that RX actually brought a bunch of things down and you can't really see it when you're so zoomed in. Just they, the more, the more zoomed out you are, the more they have to go ahead and make decisions. And so sometimes I, I have to note, it won't always look like it's fixed, but, and the clipping won't, won't always take out all the distortion. So we have step two here where we will take out the rest of it, but let's see how it did. Now, I don't know if you can tell, but that's a big improvement. Can anybody hear that on their end? Okay, it is a big improvement. Let's how, see how this one did. That's much better. I don't know if you can hear it on that end. Now, uh, you know, that's the unfortunate thing about being over the web. 
Uh, some people won't hear that on theirs. Now, there's still some distortion there, uh, but it's just dramatically better with what we just did, and that's one pass of D-clip. But every once in a while, you're going to have to experiment with those couples. So just to reiterate, the couple that I'm going to use a lot is mild analog clipping, but I'm going to flip it over to high. I, I always want the higher quality. I, um, and then the other one is high quality. This one right here works very well. And then I, I will tune them sometimes based on what I'm doing specifically. And you just have to be careful. You won't always see sometimes when it's doing things because of the zoom factor, all right? But then I, I live, most of you know me, I'm gonna live in this view. And then what I'm gonna do is this. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead right here. And now we're gonna look at it in the orangey view. The spectrogram is our friend here. So watch this. <laughs> Okay, now the D clipper's taking out most of it, but here's the, other, the next thing we'll do. We'll go through right here and we're just gonna highlight a little section of this. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into D click. And I'm gonna use this differently than I normally do. This is not a normal click situation, but I can see those clicks. And I will try because it depends on the exact, so tip, I'm showing you options. How I do, I, there, there, there are more than one and I sometimes will cycle through them because I know that this can work really well sometimes. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna select just this upper zone and before we do anything, we press the, the we're gonna silence it. And then we're gonna see, does that get rid of most of our distortion? <laughs> not totally, not totally, but it does, but it does get rid of most of it. So, cause a lot of this stuff up here isn't gonna be heard by most people. Now there is some stuff there I wanna keep. So watch this. We're gonna go into D-click. We're gonna change this. I don't normally run this sensitivity so high, but we're gonna try it up in the sixes and sevens. And we're gonna take the frequency skew and dump it all the way toward the top here. And we're gonna be a little wider and we're gonna render that out and see how much of that we can get out in one shot. Um, that actually is a pretty good fix, but it won't be perfect because there's some other distortion in there. But it's a tool that you will be blown away at points. What I don't want to do is this. I have to show you what don't what what don't to do. Don't to do this. Ah, you're gonna go. All right. That all I should say is if this guy can do it, I can do it. Don't do full spectrum and then set this at six point nine and render that thing out. Uh, that is the technical term for that is bad. Okay. <laughs> What's funny is it still worked pretty darn well. But I'm gonna undo that, okay? I don't like that. Uh, what I'm gonna going to do instead is just give a subset. I know that this stuff at the top, I we don't need it. We can almost eliminate it and still nobody will be bothered. I didn't even do my one little thing that I always do here just because I'm doing live. And I certainly would have gone through with this and figured out where he needs to be. And I probably would have had a high pass that's sitting somewhere in the 90s here for this. And I certainly would take out all the, some of this stuff at the very top. So I would have done this for, whoops, hold on. Don't do that. This is a stereo file. Gotta make sure I have them both and get rid of that there. All right. I definitely would have done that right off the bat. That's the first thing I'm gonna do in all this kind of thing where somebody gives me audio that isn't exactly the way I want it. I'm gonna take out anything, figure out where the low end is, take it out below their voice, below their singing. And then on the very high end, you know what? If you're not uh, 15, People aren't gonna hear this stuff that's sitting up right here, all right? Anything above about 15K, you know, and, and there's a there, there's some uh, discretion there and it'll depend on the audio. Sometimes I go a little lower, I'll cheat it and and I'll get some flack every once in a while. Well, it wasn't, didn't sound exactly the same as the beginning. There are some other tools I could use if I wanna hand process something, if somebody's paying me enough, I'll go through and micromanage this whole thing. So you kinda have two scenarios that we work with in this business. We've got the, Somebody's paying us 10 bucks, 20 bucks, 30 bucks to do this. So we do the quick and cheerful thing. And then somebody's going to pay me $100 to save a piece of audio or 500 or 1,000, meaning I'm going to spend two or three hours on this three minute piece and do some things. And then I'll take a lot more time, do a lot more handwork and paint all this stuff out. It's easy to do, but it's very time consuming to do well because you can end up painting a lot. Then the next thing I'm going to do. So I want to go step by step here is I'm gonna take out most of the stuff here at the top. And even now, just uh, let me make sure there's two, two spots here. We've got that one and this one. Oh, this was the worst one by far. So let, let it, just so you get to hear where we're at right now. Okay, we've got 
got those. Hope you can hear it. Hope you can hear it. But there's a lot less if I back all this stuff out. Initial state. Here it is, the original. <laughs> And then here it is with what we've just done. By the way, do your EQ, high pass, low pass first. Great, so you still hear, there's, there's some distortion right in, let me get this right, right in here. Uh, there's a little bit right there, and you can even see it. Uh, then, zooming is your friend, zooming is your friend. I'm always zooming in, I zoom out, I do this all the time. No, because as you get in tight, RX is making it one of the things about the spectrogram that people don't realize. There's a whole bunch of algorithms in the background and that's one of the things the guy who designed this, he was brilliant about. He spent insane amounts of time figuring out that when you're zoomed in at a certain level, show certain detail. When you're zoomed out, show other detail. Uh, and it's the wrong way of saying it really. When you're zoomed, when you're zoomed out, you, and you're looking at a lot of audio in a small screen, you have to make all sorts of decisions of what you're not gonna show. And then as you zoom in, he can show some things that, that he couldn't show originally uh, because there's not enough visual space, there's not enough pixels available. He made some really smart decisions. He didn't just use the off the shelf visual display, he did some other things. So I can see, you can see this, do you see these little vertical lines here? If you haven't seen this before, these are our problem childs. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in and we're gonna turn on instant process. And most of you know already, instant process is really spectral repair. Uh, if you're familiar with audition, this is auto heal on steroids, okay? So um, can you zoom way in on waveform display and compare original to D-click? Sure, I'll do that when we're, when we're uh, uh, well, let's do that. So that you can see the beginning here. Um, here it is on a mono, so 340 approximately. So here was the original. I can see this. Wow. There, there is the original distortion. Okay. And then if I, I'm just going to take this, I'm going to watch this. I'll just do this really quick here. I'm going to take this and I'm going to just highlight this tiny little section here, turn off instant process. We'll just work this here. We'll do, a, so it is a whole lot. Notice how much easier it is to see when we're doing this. I'm going to take D clip. I'm going to just take what I took before. I'm only going to do that little section there. I rounded that. Oh, did you see all those little things come out because we're zoomed in? Watch, undo, undo. Watch the top of the screen here. See that? We've got these little things that are going above and they are clipping and they're creating a lot of our distortion. We, we run the, the declipper and put that back and watch the top right here, boom. A lot of stuff got brought down. It's subtle, but it's effective, okay? So that, and, and you can even see, look at the difference when, I, when I'm here, that it is much, much, much smaller, a much, there are, there's less. I'm about 340, I remember that. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, that's that little section right there. I need to mark it on this one. I didn't mark it on the stereo, on the mono one. M key, by the way, allows you to do this. Alt or Option M a lot brings up this window, and then you can name this region. So if you're doing work for other people, it's not your audio, then you can name it here. This is way beyond what, but I'll name things. If I want to go back to them, if I would know, ah, there's distortion there that's bothering me, I'll name it so that I can come back to it easily, okay? So now we're working in this view. Switch this over. <laughs> Now notice how much clearer it is here. So who asked me that question? Greg, excellent, excellent, good man, good man, Greg. Thank you for doing that, and good to see you, Jennifer. Uh, so we have this sitting here where it is much clearer in this view than if we're over here doing it in the in the stereo view. As I'm at the same point, that's roughly 340 to 345, and then we go over here to the same thing, 340 to 345, same thing here but obviously much clearer here. So heck, I'll just keep working here. We've got the D clip. I'm gonna go through and do this. I'm laughing at myself, by the way. Uh, oh, here's another thing I do. This is a time where I probably would be going right here and just taking this top part all the way across. This These three little controls here are gold. You should be using them all the time, these three. I call this square one so I can select rectangles, but this one's just our frequency selection tool. We've got time, time, free, time and frequency and just frequency. And when we do this, I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna use the D click 
and I'm going to be hyper aggressive here because I'm in such a small area right in the top and I would experiment with this. All right. So I'm, I'm just, bam, going to do that. And I know from experience and you will too, or after you do it, I've just taken out a bunch of stuff that right now, one more time. <laughs> Okay, now I go into the hand editing here. All right, I can see that bothers me. You can see all these little verticals here. So oh, the one thing I didn't do, let me EQ this one. I, I EQ'd the stereo one and it's not an EQ. Uh, I, I really shouldn't say that. We're gonna do a high pass, low pass here and we're just gonna render that out because I know anything that's right up here, nothing. Totally worthless for our purposes here. And then anything that's at the very, 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 very bottom, uh, we don't need either. Okay, so I just took out that stuff at the bottom. I took this stuff out at the top and we're right here. Okay, and then the next thing we'll do is we'll do our famous spectral repair, but I'm gonna turn on instant process and I have spectral repair working and I'm gonna switch my tool. Now, some people use all these paint tools and I have to admit I did when I was young at doing this. I was using the lasso tool and I would lasso things, by the way, I should, lasso tool is kind of cool because It'll complete the circle for us or complete, it could be a square. I don't know what, that's not a circle. Uh, let me turn that off so you see this. I go ahead and I let go. It will always complete back to the beginning. No matter what you do, it always fills in. You do two thirds of the circle or half the circle. As long as you get more than half, it'll just go cycle back for you. And I used to do all that. I'll take all that crap out. Um, control shift Z. All right. So I used to, I could go one more. <laughs> all right, there we go. I, I used to do that. I used to be hyper precise about things. I've settled on this tool over the years, knowing that it's close enough. All right. And then the last thing I'm going to do is take about two minutes and I'm going to just paint some things out. So first thing, let's listen. And I heard distortion right here. So the first thing I'm going to do is go there. And as I zoom in, now you can see it. It's really super clear. A little bit. And then I turn on instant process. I have spectral repair all set up and I'm just going to paint it out. Now watch, I'm going to, this is how I really would do it. I'm not going to be hyper precise, but I can tell you a secret. You notice how small I'm painting right there. I'm not even covering the whole thing. That is just a tiny sliver. That's enough to take care of some of this distortion. And I'll show you what I mean, because I see this one here. I got to get rid of that. And I'm going to take this in here. But if you do it really narrow, but uh, by, by default, RX will go a little wider. It feathers things in. And listen to the difference. If I got the spots, since I'm talking to you guys. Okay. There's one right here. Oh, there's one right here. It's really tiny. Okay. Now here's the funny thing. I still can hear a couple. There's there's a couple little tiny tiny ones, but. Anybody who's coming in and listening to this, they're not, they're not starting off with the, if they hear the singing at the beginning or the piano and the music or the, your voice, whatever, they're not sitting there going, wow, I can't wait until I hear Don's distortion or that's not what they're listening for. They're listening for our story or our song or whatever we're doing. And in that case, this is strong enough that if they didn't know there was distortion, if they hadn't heard the original, they would, be, they would never hear it. It just wouldn't happen. <laughs> Oh, I, and I didn't do this section here. There's a, there's a couple things here. And see, notice, by zooming in, how am I zooming in? I'm using the equivalent of this plus right here. I'm using the up arrow and the down arrow. I'm using those all the time, up arrow, down arrow. Now, I'll just quickly, uh, I've done enough of these visually. Uh, <laughs> I'm in the tens of thousands, okay? And, that, and I don't mean to be obnoxious or bragging. It's just I've done tens of thousands. And I see these here, and, and what will happen is, Hey, I, I've got a, my mom's 82. I talk to her regularly. Uh, I was, I'm her only son. We, we were really close. So I talk to her most, sometimes I'm doing audio work of my wife's voice. I've seen thousands of her files. I can do most of it visually. Don't do that. You also want to listen to it, but check this out by just painting out a few of those things. <laughs> So three tools, primarily three tools, D-Clip. In this case, I use D-Click differently than I might. I didn't use it over the whole thing and I used it hyper aggressive. And there are times where I will do the same thing with the mouth D-Click. I should just throw that in there. Uh, 
but declip for this case because there's all this clipping. Declick in this case because I know I can run that hyper aggressive at the top. And then some a little bit, don't do that. And then a little bit of hand hand doing. And I take out the ones that are the most uh, distracting and then leave the rest. Okay. And if you do that much, uh, why would you not use D-click full spectrum? Because if you do use it full spectrum, when it's that strong, you will almost always, one, uh, I should say, because we have music here, we're getting away with a bunch of stuff. If I have voice only, and, I, and a lot of times I'm thinking in a voice only context, then that strong of a D-clicker, I'm at seven. Uh, and you cannot correlate. This is one of the funny things. People always go, oh, you know, oh, that's at seven. And then they go over to the mouthy click and the mouthy click, if I'm running that, I might be running that up at seven. They go, oh, Don said that the, the click can't run at seven. So the mouthy click can't. These tools were developed years apart. The scales do not match. You cannot compare a sensitivity of seven here with a sensitivity of seven here. They're just totally different scales. So as you know, the tools, you can do more. So well, I should say, Greg, you can run these things hyper aggressive. What you will get on 90 something percent of the voice when it's voice only and no music is you would hear some distortion in the mids and the lower end where it took out something in the middle of the voice. So that's the only reason I don't run it. I, I'm running it and you and I are going to run it on the smallest possible zone we can run it to take out the distraction. Because what happens is with this piano, we've got this great thing happening where, where this makes it easy to save audio like this, and it's called masking. The piano is masking some of the distortion that's there. Now, on great monitors, I'm sitting here, I hear a bunch of things, but I'm gonna leave them alone because no one will hear them while other things are going. If you're outside and it's windy out, you may not hear a dog barking, well, probably a bird chirping in the background if it's windy because that wind is gonna mask the bird and you're just not gonna hear it. So there's a bunch of things that get masked when you have other things going on. And in this case, yeah, I, I definitely would never run it on the whole thing. And I just know from experience, I've, I've run it that hard against voice. And that's, that's enough to really, really mess up your voice. Even with doing this skew, um, it's still way too much for most, okay? So some of it's discretion though, but I mean, you have the whole, this is super cool try it. <laughs> Even though I'm telling you, don't do it. I'm not, I'm also telling you, I break all my own rules occasionally for a certain piece of audio. And I don't apologize to anybody about it. It's about the results at the end. So we're going to do a couple things. We're always going to listen to it and we're going to look at it. And then if I can, depending on what I do, here's my last step. I look at this and go, oh, listen to how noisy this is. Can you hear that there? Now, oh, let me loop it because that's a I'll turn off instant process. I'll loop it. I, I, can you hear this over? Let me know if you can hear this over the uh, wires. There's air conditioning. There's a, I don't know where they were recording. They might've been in a commercial building. Hard to say. It could have been, you know, where, wherever they had the grand piano playing, the piano player. It's uh, something. That's a lot of noise. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go now. I'm going to go full spectrum because it's all so nice and even. And we're going to take a uh, spectral rep spectral denoise. We're going to figure out the right name of the tool here. And then we're going to learn that. And then based on that, I'm going to go a little extra aggressive there at the low end because I want to. Well, first then I will test it and see. And look at that. That's kind of a beautiful thing. Now I'm going to double click over here to make sure the scales are right. But that looks about right to me. And then I'm going to measure that. And yeah, it's a little bit on the high side there for me. So what I'm going to do is, but what? We're still going to, hold on, take that out. I'm going to say that's good enough. Render that out and let that rip. And now I'm going to take out a bunch of the background noise. You know, hold up. I'm going to cancel that. See if you can hear this noise while the piano's playing too, because it's there while the piano starts. Whoosh. Okay. Rose, thank you for telling me that. Tim, thank you. Whoosh. Okay. Now I'm gonna take spectral denoise and watch this. This is a brilliant tool. Boom. So now we're gonna denoise this whole thing. Takes longer, spectral denoise takes longer than voice denoise, but it can do some things. That's spectacular. And um, I also, because of the way I have it set up here, it took out a couple, some things here, but now listen to this.
I, that, uh, you know, if I loop over this. That's pretty amazing, all right? That's one pass. So I did three things, basically. A declip pass over the whole thing, and I'm I, you can use the presets in this case. Sometimes I can't get away with that, but it works 90% of the time without anything. Pick one of the couple presets. If you don't know, just try them. And listen, and you'll find it. it's just an amazing tool when you have that issue. Number two, I was using declick to take out just some stuff that I know is high enough. It's, it's below the primary part of the voice, in this case, of the singing, and works great there. And then a little bit of hand painting, and then do a quick denoise pass with spectral denoise, and I'm done, okay? Uh, this whole thing, now, hey, it took me years to get to where I could do this, but nonetheless, and I've done tens of thousands of files, but, and I could do a better job, okay? If, if this were a, a piece that was gonna go on the air or something, it's gonna go in a high priority thing, I would do another denoise pass and take out a little more noise. I do a couple other things. I would hand tune a couple little things in a couple places there just to take them out. But on the other hand, that's not necessary in 95% of the cases. That's reserved for the cases where somebody has something going live in a really high prestige situation where they need very, very, very clean audio where people are going to be a little more critical about the listening to it. But that's pretty spectacular, the results we can get just doing that. And uh, all right, so if I take this out, at the go back there, and I take this out again, let me undo that one thing. There, now the, here's the noise. Okay, and here it is without the noise. All right, I hope, they, I hope you can hear the difference. All right, I'm gonna check all these comments to see can you view background noise and what are you looking for for targets? Uh, I So of course it depends on the context. Context matters, so I'm generalizing. Don't take this as, oh, this is Don. Every once in a while I'll say something and then I hear somebody saying, oh yeah, Don said this was the, it's like, whoa, generalization, generalization. Uh, but I measure everything when I'm done. If I'm checking noise. I don't like those peaks up that high. First off, the total RMS is fine for this. Minus 67. We just have a lot of uh, extra stuff in there that I would take care of. And a lot of that, there's just some low end noise there. I would probably be going through and doing a second pass with, or doing a more aggressive pass with spectral uh, denoise. But I'm probably going to go through on that one. Yeah, I should just do it. If I take this, I would do this a second time, spectral denoise. And I would, I really want these peaks down under I, I, like 64, 65 would be my ideal world. Okay. There are times though where I don't want to do that in that this was recorded in in a in a place that had some ambiance and I, I don't want it to sound so clinical. Uh, what I may do though, which is cheating, is when I'm all done, I may throw it in my DAW and and put it into put it into a room so that it sounds normal again. Let's see. Now, bonus, bonus, bonus. Since you stuck with me till the end, I'm going to save this. I will save this, save this. So I'm gonna save it, Control S, Command S. I'm gonna right click on it. This is the bonus. Open containing folder. I can't, this is in my downloads folder, I think. So now I, I did, there it is. There it is, there it is, it's right there, okay? So what I would end up doing is taking that over to Studio One. I'm gonna get in a new file, file, new song. And I'm just gonna put that into a, uh, I, I will put it into this, it doesn't really matter. What, which one I put it in, but okay. And I'm gonna drag that in and I will put that here, unmute it. And then what I am gonna do is this because I'd really like it to sound more natural. This music kind of changes the changes the, everything. And I'm gonna go ahead and go into my mix panel. And the thing I'm going to do with this is take this and I'm gonna add a room reverb to it so that I get, get it sounding like that would be room reverb here. And I'm going to have a situation where, let me see if I have this to where this will play here. I, I mean, yeah, okay. So what I've just done is taken this and I will take this audio here while it's playing and I will put it into a room so that, so that it sounds a little more natural. And when you do that, Hey, having a little bit of noise and a little bit of reverb in this situation. I will also use this on podcasts, by the way. There are times where I know everyone's like, oh, you can't put room reverb in a podcast. Yes, you can. 
if you do it correctly, you can put just a touch and you can sound like they're in a normal room, not ridiculous, but they sound natural instead of being sterile. So there's a balance on all this stuff. But I would, I would go through and have this piano sounding like they're in a room and you can have something like, uh, I, you know, if I put it into that one, it'll be bigger. You can, you can hear this here. I don't know if you can hear that over the wires. That's going to be so subtle. And that's so small, so quiet. Hold on. But what I would do is I'd go through for this because it's music and I'm going to put them into a little concert hall. I'm going to put them into a, a large club. Uh, I may go ahead and do one of these things where it makes sense for the context and I'm going to throw that in. And I, I also do that for voiceover at some points where I'll use another tool from the DAW in order to do the final cleanup and make it sound like they were in whatever space they should have been in there. So let's go back to RX and so, since we're talking RX here. So there are times where you end up going ahead and saying, hey, hey, I want to sound natural. Well, what is natural for music? It's not natural to record music in my bedroom or in my, my little studio where there's no, there's no ambience. So I'm going to go ahead and set it and make it seem like this is recorded in, in the appropriate location. It's the same thing. Sometimes I'll put office sounds behind something where somebody's talking. And if you put very, very subtle room tone, which is the sound of an office, uh, sound, sound uh, I use story, story blocks. I've got all these, I've got room ambience and outdoor, like you're in a park and things like that. And man, you can, you can hide all sorts of things if, if the context is right. Now we're doing audio books and stuff. Don't you ever do any of that stuff. But if we're doing something like this, I would put this on into a place where it sounds like it was performed in a nice hall, a nice stage, a nice concert venue, rather than have it sound sterile. And then I want a little bit of that background in there. I don't want to take it all out and sound super dry. All right. Hope that, hope that helps. Rose, thank you for that comment there. And let me see, did I miss, who did I miss here? Adrian, thank you. Oh, you're on a phone speaker. <laughs> yeah, if you're on a phone, uh, yeah, it's not going to work. Bob, Adrian, Nathan, sorry I missed you there. Tim, Jennifer, Greg, Rose. So thank you guys for being here. I hope that helped. I hope you see that you could save something. If you're doing podcasts, especially our, the podcast editors get all sorts of stuff that's just yeah, amazingly weak. Okay. And then a couple bonuses. Just remember, if you have a file in here, I pull these in from all sorts of different places. And sometimes I don't remember where, where I got them from. And so you can right click and open containing folder that allows you two days later to go, ah, where in the heck was this thing? You know, I don't know. Take this open containing folder. It'll come up in finder. It'll come up in file manager. Works really well to get you back to wherever it was on the drive. Okay. So that helps a lot there. And uh, if you guys have something else that comes up, if you have some audio, I'm always looking for good samples. So if you got, if you have something that's not working, some problem that you have, be sure to get a hold of me, send them to me. I'll do a live session on it, showing how to take out air conditioners and dog barks, and I've taken out sirens and planes flying over. Now you can't save everything, and sometimes the right answer is just re-record. So there are times where that's the right answer. Re-record. Don't be afraid of doing another performance. At, I made my living as a musician. You can never perform too often. If you're a performer, don't complain that you get to perform again. Now, there's a difference. If I have a whole chapter that's 45 minutes, I don't want to perform 45 minutes again, probably. But if it's a three-minute thing or a two-minute thing, yeah. You know, a lot of times re-recording is a better answer than doing what we just did here of taking it out. But hey, sometimes I know in this case, it's not just uh, this gentleman. I'm drawing a blank on his name, but you, but you end up with this whole other thing. He would have had to get the accompanist back and he would have had to set up the mic wherever they were, wherever they recorded it. And it may not be at his house that he recorded this. So therefore there's a bunch of uh, other factors because I know the first thing people say, well, just re-record it. It's like, well, that's fine. But sometimes the people involved with the original production are not available. So I got people sending me stuff from major studios that's like, oh, yeah, it, it would make no sense for them to go out and spend $100,000 to reset that up out in the desert to solve that problem when they can send it to me and I can take it out in 10 minutes. So some, some audio, you need to deal with whatever you're given. Uh, sometimes the answer is, though, hey, go out and re-record it. If it's just you, sometimes getting your performance chops up are going to pay off, pay off, pay off. You just can't pro perform enough. 
All right. All right. Hope you guys are having a great day, great weekend. Check that out. Be sure to subscribe and like and all that kind of stuff. So hope you have a fantastic day, great weekend. And of course, we'll see you on the wires. Bye-bye.